Hello, my name's Mike M0 MSN, and today I'm going to talk to you about a subject that really boils my carbuncle. It really does get annoying. Uh, it, it's 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 a myth. Why? How long is the perfect length of coax? Well, I can tell you straight away, the perfect length of coax is the length of coax that you need between the antenna and the radio. There is no set length. You don't need a half wavelength or a quarter wavelength. Um, and in this video, I'm going to try to explain why. There is a myth that you need to make all your coax lengths half a wavelength. Uh, and the reason behind it is that, let me just quickly draw um, our transmitter. And on this side, we'll draw our antenna. And in the middle, we've got our length of coax. Okay. And the idea is that if you make this length of coax a half wavelength for the frequency that you want to use, it will reflect perfectly, i.e. make the transmission line invisible, whatever the reading at the bottom of your antenna is, will be repeated at your transmitter. And that is perfectly true. That is the case. If you've got a 3 to uh, 1 reading here, you'll get a 3 to 1 reading there if it's precisely a half wavelength. And that's because you have a wave that travels through the coax Just let me drop out quickly from the video. Uh, this is during the editing because um, I've noticed that I've drawn a full wavelength rather than the, the half wave, um, which would be more representative of the coax. But in this particular instance, let's pretend that we've got a full length of coax, a full wavelength length of coax between the receiver and the, and the antenna. It still works exactly the same because it's always multiples of half a wave um, length of, of coax uh, that we're talking about here. So this is a full wavelength. OK, uh, so let's go back to the uh, to the video. Half wavelength. Half wavelength. So it's a full wave. At that point, you'll have exactly the same reading as you have here. And you have exactly the same reading as you have there. So you can have the radio at the half wavelength point there or at the full wavelength point there. And it will have exactly the same impedance reading as it has at the bottom of the antenna. Right. Here's the rub. If your antenna is perfectly SWR and is showing 50 ohms and you have 50 ohm coax, which I could draw, and the radio is 50 ohms, then the reading that you'll get at any point down that coax will be 50 ohms. So you don't need to have half wavelengths. What you need is a resonant antenna. And the problem with this half wavelength rule is that it's OK. It only works on a set frequency. So if I done this for, let's say, 28 megahertz. OK, as soon as I go to 28.1 megahertz, I've no longer got a half wavelength. And in fact, I've introduced 
an impedance mismatch by changing the frequency. So this half wavelength thing is is okay for a set frequency, but as soon as you vary that frequency, even by a kilohertz, that goes out the window. So it is true, but also an utter pointless myth. Your best bet is to make sure that the antenna is resonant at the frequency that you want to use, or better still, if it's something like an ATAS or a Tar Hill, it will change frequencies at a push of a button. The frequency changes, your coax is still the same length. You just need a resonant antenna representing 50 ohms, and then the length of coax doesn't make a damn bit of difference. There you go. Hope it makes it clear. But if you want to know more or you need to research more, there's a great um, presentation or video by Stan uh, Belalisco. Might have got that name wrong. Um, unfortunately, no silent key. But his video is here. I'll put the link in the uh, description below. Prescription below. I'll put the link in the prescription below. No, I won't. I'll put the link in the description below and uh, you'll find out more information there. Well worth a check out, by the way. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers. Bye-bye. One to one. 50 ohms, 50 ohms, 50 ohms, one to one.